there's been a lot of criticism of elected progressives. You know, uh, you just said we need to change the people making the policies. Well, the thought is people got a lot of these squad members elected. Of course, Bernie, people supported him and they share our values and policies, but it, they're not going to the mat like people want them to go. Uh, I don't want to relitigate, force the vote, but my point is they seem to be more of the um, idea of forging relationships with more establishment Democrats, the long game, uh, you know, trying to get on committees, et cetera, et cetera. And I heard you in the past say, you know, we don't have that long. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, uh, I'm not trying to get you in trouble here, but I mean, you just look at some of these highly influential uh, AOC, others, massive followings, it doesn't seem they're rallying the troops to to go on offense against a Democratic Party that's essentially offering the same old, same old. You know, a lot of the people that you're talking about that we like so much had never been around wealth and power before. And so they didn't know uh, how seductive it can be. I, I don't think the average person can possibly imagine how seductive it is for Nancy Pelosi to say, here's my private cell number. You can call me anytime. Um, it's so clear to me what happened here. They were told, play the game, do it right, and you'll get what you need and want, and et cetera. And I'm sure many of them are very disappointed right now. Now, as far as Bernie is concerned, he must be heartbroken. Uh, yeah, they they trusted people in situations that perhaps in retrospect they should not have trusted. You know, there's a conversation about how back when Bernie was first a senator, many senators weren't that nice to him, sort of peripheralized him. And Joe Biden was nice to him. He was his friend. You know, all of us can imagine that. You have personal relationships. Now, in my life, I've been around quite a bit. And I, I think of myself as socioeconomically well-traveled. So I see certain things and I go, yeah, they should have known. But maybe they, sh how can I say they should have known? They hadn't been offered the private cell number of somebody that powerful before, so didn't know what a trap it is. Right. But we'll see. Everybody's on their journey. But the point is, one thing right now is, is what we need to get is about the system, not the people. And the system is such that both parties are clearly so infused with corporate dominance as to form a corporate-backed status quo that has hijacked both major political parties. And the status quo will not disrupt itself. Now, AOC has to decide for herself, what will I do now, as will uh, many others. I, I love the way Cori Bush is really out there every day. She's so clearly trying. Um, and they're all trying in their way. You know, this is not about personal insult or criticism or blame. Look at what Bernie has done for us. Tremendous what he's done for us. It's a tragedy in my mind he's not president right now. On the other hand, I think a lot of us think, oh, couldn't you have fought a little harder here? Couldn't you have not agreed right there? We all get that. But it, you know, it's like a, this is how I see it. It's like a tennis game. So let's say you're playing, you know, when you see like a really brilliant tennis player, right? Like at Wimbledon or something. And you see a really brilliant player drop a ball in a way that's a mistake they haven't made since they were 12 years old. They don't have even a fraction of a second to indulge. Oh shit. You just got to keep playing. You know, we're going to win some, we're going to lose some. Yeah. You know, win some, we're going to lose some. You can't allow yourself to get too sidetracked at all. We have to be thinking, what are we going to do now? That's what we need to be thinking. And as I was saying uh, yesterday in a conversation with Crystal Ball, none of this would have happened had the American people uh, not taken our eye off the political ball, as it were, for the last 40 years. Now, some people are listening and going, well, I wasn't even born 40 years ago, but some people are. Um, none of us have played it perfectly, and all of us just need to do our best going forward. And mm -hmm. If we're deeply reflective and in touch with what's happening and hip to what's going on in our lives and how we can help, you know, I have um, a website called candidatesummit.com. And if people can go there, we'll go there. They will see all these really great people, non-corporate backed candidates who are running for Congress. This is a year for that. Look at the videos of these people. See what progressive is running in your district. If no progressive, I was talking to a woman the other day. She's in Northern California. 
She, I said, who's your congressperson? She told me who it was. I checked into him. I called her back. I said, do you realize this guy is like totally corrupt? Totally. He's a corporatist Democrat who does nothing. She said, yeah, yeah, I know. I said, well, what progressive is running against him? She said, well, apparently no one. I said, why not you? Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's got to think outside outside the box in terms of their own life right now. Either support a progressive candidate in 2022 or be a progressive candidate for something. It might be for school board. It might be for city council. This is the the last thing we need to do is be anti-electoralism right now. Nothing would make the oppositional forces happier. And Uh, and I mean oppositional to us. What would be your rebuttal to people who say, I get that, but we just talked about uh, elected progressives who are not fighting uh, to the mat for these policies. So you're telling me run or support people in my area, but aren't they just going to get in? They'll get Pelosi's number. And yeah. <laughs> so you think that some of the progressive candidates right now don't see that? You think they're, I would say to that person, what you think they're stupider than you? You think you get that and they don't? You listen to some of these progressive candidates talking and they are aware of what just happened. They're aware they would have played force the vote uh, differently. Go to the town hall and ask them. Hmm. And listen, I don't know, Jordan, but I would assume that some of the people who didn't do force the vote might be looking back at it now thinking we should have played it that way. I don't know.